used to think of ourselves like King Kong, but we ain't who we used to be. Our hopes, our dreams, even the distant memories of those dreams just gone. What if we were all monsters just fighting to stay alive? Fighting against hell every goddamn day just to find a lick of peace in this rock? We faced down the monsters, but we had to make our own to do it. Who can tell when one monster ends and the other begins? We couldn't even find peace amongst ourselves. We made us think that Kaiju would give it to us just because we made some comically gargantuan dumbass robots. This is our reality now, and this is our purpose, only this, only death. There is no end except your own. We don't celebrate birthdays no more. Just another thing on a long list of shit that don't matter no more, neither. We fight for the privilege of fighting again tomorrow. We wake up, some of us die, and we go to bed, then we repeat it again tomorrow, only less of us are alive this time. Sucks for me most of all, though. Patrick just did a great goddamn video on Terrence Malick. I thought I was so clever applying this disaffected monotone drawl to a shapeable poetic reality ruled by robots, but it wasn't to be Michael, you fool. Watch Patrick's video, it's really good. Hey, here's a lot of super complicated stuff to talk about. We need to ask broad questions here that might not have simple answers, broad examples that span entire cultures through the lens of the same medium. Allow me to illustrate. For example, the depth of this impossible to solve cranial bone dumpster could be centered on is King Kong a kaiju? Before you answer, kaiju culturally and etymologically are a Japanese invention, itself a Japanese word meaning strange beast. There are vague references in literature before this point, but the concept of kaiju as mainstream in the modern era will come from our journey in film. We open in 1933 with the release of Wasei Kingu Kongu in Japan. It's just a dude in a gorilla costume. This was released the same year as King Kong was in America. The turnaround on this is incredible. And then later in 1938, Japan just made a King Kong movie. And then World War II happens. And we move to 1954, Godzilla comes out, and that's where the modern idea of kaiju really comes from. Ishiro Honda made a film where the monster in the Havoc Reeks is personified by a giant monster that destroys cities, but really it's a stark reminder that humans are the people caught in the unimaginable horror of nuclear holocaust. Even the silly stereotypes about Godzilla movies about dudes in suits come from a panic created intentionally after the movie was released in America that cut 16 minutes of footage out of the film. And made Raymond Burr the American journalist main character and gave that character VO that just talks over everything that they didn't bother to translate in the first place. Officials and scientists were called together. Dr. Yamani, Japan's leading paleontologist, was among the top scientists. And oh, whoops, deleting all the subtext and nuance about the consequences suffered on innocent people as a result of the world entering the nuclear age. America pretended it was a dumb monster movie about a dude in a rubber suit because that's what America do. Which makes scenes like this one in Steven Spielberg's sequel to Jurassic Park, The Lost World, really weird. 
America referencing their own racist trope based on their own misunderstanding of a classic film, making a joke about their own censorship of said film. Bruh, bo us. King Kong and Godzilla suddenly take on meaning as symbols of identity, the most serious action in all of human history and its repercussions that are still felt today is at the center of monster punching movies. Art connects us even when the world sucks. In a lot of ways, Godzilla was art made to try and help culture understand an evolving, extremely difficult world. This is at the heart of kaiju and kaiju culture. Look at you, Sora no da kaiju <clears throat> In 1962, King Kong, in fact, did fight Godzilla in a movie called, sorry, uh, King Kong versus Godzilla. Okay. Some of the artists working on this movie list the original King Kong as inspiration in their work at Toho on Godzilla. These monsters are intrinsically linked in ways that modern studios absolutely do not appear to understand or worse, appreciate. Okay, smash cut to Ultraman. I love the TV series like Ultraman, Ultra Q, and uh, I grew up watching that too. Power Rangers, Voltron, friggin' Rampage, Neon Genesis Evangelion, a thing people have a couple of opinions on. But did you know? The, ki the Frankenstein is a kaiju. I know, it's a turbo funky world, y'all. Kaiju culture is big and over the top and hilarious and somehow endearing because there's generally a heart yearning for meaning of our shared worldly chaos. You don't have to think about big monster fights too hard, but it's awesome when we see deeper meaning in films, especially when they're about huge-tastic robots punching through space avocados, something about who we are and where we came from. Let's talk about the movie, and by extension, Guillermo del Toro and his effusive, never-expiring joy. Pacific Rim is a 2013 gigantic robot film written by Travis Beecham and Guillermo del Toro, directed by Guillermo del Toro. It is the canonical sequel to Robot Jocks. Not a lot of people know that because it, uh, it is in fact wrong. He puts so much attention to the detail and cares so much about how it looks. We're going to talk about this movie through the gleeful eyes of Del Toro, who asked that designers not use pop cultural references when having conversations about design. Don't reference Evangelion, not Voltron. Pretend you're really canceling the apocalypse with giant robots and solve it with design. So let's talk about those Jaegers. To start, thoughts on visuals and stories were agreed upon, then reworked to include the engineering and space for some mechanics a Jaeger would actually require, then went to the outside and designed the vents exhaust. And then we pulled back and started figuring out the vents, uh, the skin on top of that. There's going to be a theme here where everyone tries exceptionally hard to deliver on the love letter to robot punching. The designers created distinct and interesting robots and then made them work. You could go down the rabbit hole for hours on just the Jaegers. Take Cherno Alpha, for example, the oldest Jaeger still fighting the fight, powered by a nuclear reactor. And sort of a nuclear reactor on top of that. It looks like a giant headed robot, but if you look at it carefully, it's actually a smaller robot carrying the reactor like this. It looks like a big, slow-ass beater who puts cylinders in its hands called the roll of nickels to punch better, a move Gypsy Danger later steals. Oh, only this time uh, with shipping containers. <laughs> at its heart, Pacific Rim is about the world coming together to put up a final defense against their own extinction. They even put up a seawall against an apocalyptic threat that came from the ocean because subtlety is for mimes. Yabart mimes. 
Did I mention Idris Elba is in this movie as a tough as nails commander with a secret? Today we are canceling the apocalypse! You see, Pacific Rim is a bit of a tone salad. Just whatever is in there. Hey, name an ingredient you can't put in a salad. Take a moment if you need it. Wrong. Pacific Rim wants you to have a good time. It's summer level camp played not just straight, but with conviction. If I'm going to do this, I need you to protect me. We have differences we must work through. It's endearingly simplistic in this day and age. The Earth's in some real trouble here, and the only solution is gigantic robots. Guillermo is a huge fan of kaiju art in seemingly all forms, and he pays respect to the history of this art form as well as its future. Also, these clips will never get old. I'm not sure how many times in any person's life where the opportunity to make a gigantic monsters fighting robots movie will come across the old plate, but if you say yes and you're tapping into a deep cultural touchstone, you need to execute a thing with respect and also justify your own existence. It is a very simple message about the entire world coming together to face down their own extinction and it hits Independence Day levels of hoorah. <laughs> which is a nice, clean message. Multiple Academy Award-winning director Guillermo del Toro took a straight B-movie-level premise and delivered a triple-A film that a lot of people hold very dear while still delivering the b of movies. Yes, I see what it did there also. It's weird and pretty gross while simultaneously being oddly beautiful and operates with a details-obsessed level of filmmaking and a less-than-obsessed approach to physics. Which is not a complaint. It's telling to see what this movie takes seriously and what it doesn't. Hashtag elbow rockets. Yeah! The virtual cameras in this film operate on real camera rules. A shot can go where you could theoretically build a thing or have a helicopter fly near said thing where thing is used here to denote a massive city-eating leviathan or a 7,000 ton machine. Pacific Rim does not have cameras that draw attention to themselves and make you feel like you're watching a video game. Jaegers move slowly and arduously, and they can only punch so fast, so you might as well put a rocket on its elbow so it can shoot rocket punches, and somehow that tangle of words I just called a sentence checks out. Regulators. Yeah, uh, hey, I have some feedback. The average infrastructure of a city wouldn't support massive robots and kaiju running around and bopping each other on the heads on top of metropolitan streets, because, like, the whole city would just collapse or whatever. I'm very smart. I talk on the internet. I think practically everyone involved in this movie knew that absolutely none of this could happen in real life. That's why it's a movie. Candy doesn't have to have a point. That's why it's candy. And the world of this movie absorbs the kaiju. They build new things out of their bones. There's an entire black market devoted to their anatomy. There is so much thought and care and effort and joy in every single frame. You can dig in this sandbox for hours and still find new things to take with you. Guillermo has a heart for monsters. They aren't just villains. They're another character, and they go out of their way to characterize everything in this film. And I appreciate that, even if it wasn't something I always did myself. So I guess what I'm saying is it's time to come clean about something. I always wondered 
If it came down to it, does that person even exist? That fabled but unproven one person that mirrors every fundamental aspect of our existence. The one. Drift compatibility. They said outside of kin, maybe people you know and since you're toddling stretch if you're looking hard enough, but it's it's just too fundamental of a connection to be random. Fed of the world, right? Take no chances, but you probably have to anyway. Who is drift compatible with me? It's a big question, scope of the universe type shit. comes down to it is your mind in sync with someone else's so well that y'all could save the world. I haven't always appreciated this movie. I use that word purposely. I did not value what this movie was offering, but knocking it because of what it wasn't. And every trusted friend that came to me to tell me that maybe I was missing something, I didn't listen to. My biggest gripe, my biggest beef, the thing I couldn't wait to tell everyone about was about why Drift Compatibility was this massive port of call for storytelling and I held it against this movie that they didn't do what I wanted them to do with that concept. You see, Drift Compatibility would allow you to see a person's entire life, all of their guilt, all of their worst romantic encounters, all of their family drama, all of their fear, every mistake you've ever made, and that means drama. But that wasn't what this movie was trying to do, and I myopically believed that made me somehow superior. You're probably asking yourself, when is he going to talk about the title? Right now, I called this episode Pacific Rim the best, dumbest movie. Hey, real talk, being a YouTuber is hard. You have to come up with a topic and provide meaningful insight on a topic every few weeks and if you take too long or people disagree loudly with your conclusions or how you made them yubber last year i started putting together a schedule of loose ideas toward the beginning of the year so at least i would have some idea of what i'm doing after i finish a video it gives me comfort to plan in this way So earlier this year, I had an idea to talk about how Pacific Rim was the best B-movie of all time. I didn't mean dumb as a pejorative, but I was still operating on that belief I had that Pacific Rim was not as smart as it could be, even if it's the best time you can have at a movie. I was wrong. I'm overjoyed I did this episode because I can say that I was wrong, and Pacific Rim was a consolation movie. Del Toro had spent years on a film called At the Mountains of Madness, a Lovecraftian oeuvre. He worked on that movie for two and a half years, during which Avatar came out. Del Toro then got James Cameron on board his movie as a producer, but even that wasn't enough to sway Universal Pictures to part with $150 million to make it. And all of that left the door open for Pacific Rim, a film that would highlight his entire life and the things that brought him joy. Del Toro credits Pac Rim as being the only film shoot he ever fully enjoyed, completely from start to finish every single day. He took a history he himself lived in almost daily as a child and put the dreams of all those people that have made incredible kaiju films over the years up onto the screen in a way that no one had ever seen before. He was in a position to take a massive swing at celebrating the entire history of a genre and he succeeded on such a scale. If it was anyone other than Del Toro, I probably wouldn't have believed it was possible. When you see the breadth of what they were attempting to do, it's hard not to stand in awe. I probably should have changed the title after I announced it to something like Pacific Rim, wow, gee whiz, goodness, golly glaciers. But I also think it puts a punctuation mark on what I mean. A ton of people think Pacific Rim is a dumb movie. I used to be one of them. For me, it's almost a joke at this point that I left the title, but I think it's a badge. I think it's endearing. I think a lot of people look at Pacific Rim and say, I think this is a dumb movie. And now I can look them in the eyes and say, yeah, it's the best, dumbest movie.
Hey, it's my voice again. I'm actually here for the credits with David McIntyre, a wooden leg, Matt Hessinger, Brosephine, Ken Burns, John Brett Busy, Trey Bouchard, Sam Bacon, Jennifer Adame, Christopher Wu. Man, this is so a black tooth, but I could do them all. Uh, hey, how's it going, everyone? I really thought I was going to get through that. Uh, cause I'm dumb. Um, this is scrolling way too fast. Yes, I pay good money just to see these in the credits, and I say good things to keep you in them? I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. So this dealt with some of my existential dread about doing this, uh, sort of connecting up some of my feelings over the past few years. I mean, Pacific Rim came out a long time ago, but I, I carried that with me for a long time. Um... And I wanted to come clean and be like, I was very wrong. Unlike Sandy and J. Remy Lester, who are always right. A uh, little known fact. A lot of people don't know that. Go to patreon.com slash movies and Mikey. Please, if you want to support us. Also, like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Just make our metrics blow up. I'm told that's the word metrics. Because uh, YouTube is confusing and I'm old. And... Benjamin A. Straub was not. Actually, I don't know how old that guy is. Henry Kropf, Kelly Naylor, Richard Scott. A lot of people have been saying their name for a long time. Walrus, Alec, Axel Lehman, James Maston, Kevin Ochter, Gary Lathy, Cyclops Boy, Jacob Cozy, Old Map. You are all amazing. Thank you for the continued support. Support creators. Bye.